Hi everyone. Today I am going to explain you WebSockets in Spring Boot 2.0 version. How the WebSockets will play in the Spring Boot. WebSocket is a very thin lightweight layer about TCP. It makes it very suitable to use sub protocols to embed the messages. It is an advanced technology that makes it possible to open an interactive communication session between the users browser and a server with this api you can send messages to a server and receive event driven responses without having to pull the server for a reply so now i am going to download the gradle project with java the spring boot version is 2.0.3 from the spring initializer web page here I provided the group name as com.talktoamareswaran.projects and then the artifact name I given websockets demo. We need to add the dependency websocket. So I added that dependency and then I click the generate project button. The Gradle project is downloaded successfully into your machine. Just save that zip file after downloaded the zip file go to the file location and extract the zip file and then import this gradle project into your eclipse in the eclipse you have to be use the existing gradle project option so use existing gradle project option and provide the project root directory here and then click next next and finish so the project dependencies will download into your machine it will take a few minutes to download it after download the dependency successfully your application I mean your project is imported successfully into your Eclipse go to the builder gradle file and make sure the spring boot version is 2.0.3 release and then the spring boot shorter WebSocket dependency is added or not also we need to add some more dependency to support the socket js client and then the stomp web socket and also the bootstrap and jquery dependencies also if you want to be used you can add it but in this demo i am going to use the cdn bootstrap jquery in the html files okay after adding the dependency in the build out gradle file and refresh the gradle project so the newly added dependencies will download into your machine after download successful go to the main spring boot application class file annotated with the add spring boot application that make sure that it is annotated with the spring boot application the next step i'm going to create a model called scorecard okay here i am going to declare a variable team1 and then private string team2 and then the total runs and then the total overs completed so these four attributes I am going to add it here in the scorecard model in this demo I would like to show you the live scorecard details the score will be updated from the admin side and then the all the connected socket clients will receive the scorecard details maybe here i want to make sure the batting team and then the bowling team so here i am adding a another attributes batting team name and then the batting sorry the bowling team name okay it would much better we uh, we can differentiate which team is batting and which team is bowling so we don't need that first uh, two variables team one and team two okay just i am removing that so create a getter and setter method for this four attributes batting team name bowling team name total overs and then the total runs okay so the model is created now okay so look at here the setter method and getter method for the scorecard model the next step 
create a another class file that represents the controller class file okay score code controller here I am going to add the at controller annotation this class file act as a controller that contains the message mapping and then the send to annotated APIs so here I am going to add the new API annotated with the message mapping scorecard and then the send to is topic live score the message mapping scorecard URI is used to update the new score and then the send to annotation is used to send the updated score to the client side whoever connected with the websocket connection okay so here I am defining a method scorecard get scorecard that contains the payload type is scorecard just adding the thread.sleep as 2 seconds so whenever the scorecard is updated it, it takes the 2 seconds time to send the new data to the client okay so I am just returning a whatever the score we received from the scorecard API okay so this is the simple controller I return here okay this is the send to the subscriber api url and then the message mapping url is the scorecard the next step i am going to create a configuration class that represents the websocket config this class file should annotate it with the at configuration annotation and also we need to add the one more annotation for here enable websocket configurer we enable websocket message broker sorry enable websocket message broker and then this class file should implements that websocket message broker configurer okay so here we are going to define a two methods I mean we are going to override the two methods that represents one is the configure the message broker to enable the simple broker and then the application destination prefix okay the next step I am going to add another one method that registers the endpoints so whoever connected the live score websocket endpoint that connects the websockets okay so the next step we have to create a HTML file from the client side so there is a no static folder under the resource directory so I am going to create a new folder that names with static under the resource directory okay here I am going to create a new file I mean the HTML file called admin.html like uh, we say admin page.html this admin page.html I am going to use it to send the live scorecard details to the server side okay so assume like I am watching the match I am the admin I am just updating the team score in one of the web page okay so those courses will send to the client whoever connected with the websocket connection so this is the simple HTML file with four input text boxes batting team bowling team name total runs and total overs okay so in this HTML file I am going to add the new script admin script.js in this admin script.js I am going to add a javascript method to send the batting team name bowling team name total runs and total overs 
details to the server side okay so here i use the jquery on application low when the button clicks i'm just calling a one method send data to socket okay here i'm just defining a method send data to socket and then i declared the four variables and then i'm storing the text box value of form batting team name bowling team name total runs and then the total overs and also i added the two more script for socket js and then the storm client js in the admin page.html file here i am defining a variable name storm client so on page load i am just defining a socket js object and then the socket i connected by using this storm over using this storm client this is the endpoint of the socket okay so this is the storm client so i want to make sure on page load if any storm client is running on the page i just want to disconnect it storm client dot disconnect so maybe the c should be a small case okay so disconnect so on page load so if any storm client connection is there i just disconnected and open the new socket connection the next thing so whenever the user added the uh, i mean the admin added the score detail that score detail should go to the server side with the api app scorecard so here this is the scorecard details the json payload i am sending to the url app scorecard the app represents the application destination prefix represents and then this is the message mapping so in this admin page html file the admin should enter the batting team name bowling team name total runs and total over details and then if he clicks the button and then that will goes to the server side the next time going to define another one html file live score dot html okay so here also i am just defining a simple html file that which contains a simple table with the two table data batting table data and bowling table data so look at here this is a simple batting table data and bowling table data here i want to update the score here also i added the strong uh, js web socket and socket uh, js client script here i am going to define a i may create a new script file live score.js in live score.js also i am going to create a new web socket connection okay so look at here i just copying this from the admin script.js in the live code.js also i just want to create a new web socket connection so here we don't need any button click so here i created the web socket connection and then the storm client variable we need to define it here storm client okay so on application I mean the on page load startup uh, I created the new web socket connection and then I started to subscribe the live score topic endpoint okay so this is the live score topic endpoint I started to subscribe so we will receive the JSON data of the model scorecard so here I just parsing that JSON and adding into the batting td and bowling td value okay in the javascript i just use the html of method just adding the batting team value and then bowling team value so on page load so i created the web socket connection i started to subscribe the live code api
okay so here whenever uh, the admin clicks the send button that payload data will goes to the server and then the live score.js will receive the data from the server to client now i am going to run this application so here i just running as a java application if you guys are using gradle just use the gradle clean build command you can see here tomcat shorter on the port 8080 and then started in 9.7.93 seconds 9.793 seconds okay uh, so now go to the web browser this is the chrome browser i just hitting the live score.html there is no score so far okay still it's waiting for the score from the server batting and bowling and then the firefox browser i am going to open the admin page okay admin page dot html so in the firefox browser assume like i am the admin so i am watching the match i want to update the score here in the admin page this payload data will go to the server and then whoever connected to the websocket client to the server they will receive the data here i just shared the batting team in india bowling team in england and then the total run is 230 runs for five wickets and then the total overs are completed 35.4 now i'm just clicking a success so look at here in the chrome window we are receiving that data okay so this is how the websocket will work so this is how the scorecard, the live scorecards are updating. Now I am just changing the bowling team name, England to Pakistan. So the bowling team name, team name has changed, the Pakistan. So I just want to updating the live score details with the batting team name and then the bowling team name. Okay, the next time I am just changing the batting team name as Australia. And then the total runs I am changing 140 for 7 wickets and then the total overs is 45.3. I am just clicking a success button. So here look at here the batting team Australia and then the bowling team is Pakistan. It's changed. Okay this is how the web socket will work. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe my YouTube channel. Thank you.